I uh, was going to ask you something else. Um, face mask. Jeez, how could I almost forget? Face mask. Everyone and their mother wants face masks. I know. People and, sometimes ask, come and ask for it, even, yeah. if they, if they, even if they don't need it. Yeah, right. So who needs it and who, who doesn't? If you have upper jaw deficiency uh, and you want to correct it with non-surgical methods, that's just one of the ways to fix it. But we all have upper jaw deficiency, doctor. You know, some do, some don't. <laughs> I mean, from front to back, not just from right to left. Right. So will you only treat class threes with a face mask? Uh, class three, not, not for always. the audience, class three is when the lower jaw is in front of the upper jaw, or the lower teeth are in front of the upper teeth like this. Yeah, underbite. An underbite. Yeah. So that's that's a, the best case scenario for a face mask, mm. but sometimes uh, patients could be uh, deficient deficient in both jaws. So in some you know in those cases, or uh, there is a real airway collapse, and let's say like in a teenager who is not ready for surgery. Yeah. So I would use a face mask there. Would you use a face mask on an adult who was a class one? but was clearly just underdeveloped in both jaws? Or would you fear that the lower jaw would, that you would end up with an overjet where the lower jaw didn't follow? Yeah, I would. So, and then I had some patients who, who were either class one or in class two asking me for a face mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that would not be the right choice of appliance for them. Because that, that you know, if, they were, if we were doing surgery, then why are we doing face masks? Because that could be corrected surgically. Right, sure. but if we're not doing surgery and we're going to create a giant overjet, uh, then we have a problem. Mm -hmm. All the time, I have people who I speak with who they tell me, you know, this is what my bite looks like, and then they give me a perfect class one, but then they say, but I'm more comfortable like this, and they loosen their lower jaw, they relax it, and it slides forward into like a class two or sometimes even a class three. What do you think about that? Are those patients candidates for face mask? Uh, maybe, maybe not. So very often when they, when patients, uh, plaster forward and they say they're more comfortable like this, that's usually, uh, indicates to me that there is some sort of an instability in the system. And, uh, when they posture, uh, forward, that's, that's not a repeatable stable position. Yeah. So you can't treat to that. If the patient tells me, oh, I, I want you to treat, you know, I'm like this and I want you to use a face mask t to match it. I would refuse because that, that will create a big problem. Is that also a sign that a patient has been watching too many videos online? That could be the case. <laughs> that certainly could be the case. But, it, but it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a position that is not repeatable. The, the only repeatable position is when the jaw joints sit in the socket. Uh, if the patient pushes forward, that means there is some tension in the system. And by bringing the jaw forward, the muscles relax. And that makes them more comfortable. But it's not a position you could treat to. So when we determine bite, we have to look at the joint. That's the key. Right. And is that done with a, with a scan of some kind? Yeah, comb beam, and uh, sometimes you have to put the models in with a special bite and articulator. Right, interesting. Yeah, I always tell patients, um, they, always, they always, when they're chatting with me, they say, no, this is where I want to bite. And they go like that, and I say, and I say smile. And then they smile. And the yeah. lower jaw goes right back. <laughs> exactly. I go, that's not a sustainable position for your that lower is, jaw. I know, you know, for, for, for someone who's not a dentist, you're very educated. <laughs> well, I think, I think you, get, you should get an honorary degree. Doctor, that's, that's extraordinarily kind of you to say, given my uh, you know, trauma with having not gone to dental school, even though I really <laughs> wanted to. So that means a lot. Never too late. <laughs> well, we'll see. But for now, I'll just, I do have warrior knowledge, which is to say... I've been through it. Yeah, you I've, have. You certainly I've, have. For there, there were multiple years where I thought my lower jaw belonged eight millimeters jutted forward until I realized, you know, after some treatment where my upper teeth went forward, that my lower teeth, my lower jaw was not following and I ended up looking like a beaver, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was a very rough I've lesson. Se I've learned. seen all those pictures. Yes, of, of me. I, I, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and I've I've seen that happen to uh, several other people. Well, where, where yeah. they'll say, "Oh yeah, I'm in Aga right now," and they'll smile, and I'll say, "Ooh." Yeah. Ooh. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I've seen a couple of those. Yeah. Which face mask do you use? The crane, the bow, the regular old, the Grumman's. I use a conventional face mask that, uh, uh, you know, just straight straight over the face 
uh, a pet here and pet in a chin for someone who's got TMJ problems, probably a crane is, is a better choice, but it's uh, very cumbersome. I find it, you know, I've, I've tried, I've, I have one patient who decided to try it himself. Yeah. Uh, again, no objections to it at all. It's, it's, uh, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. It's just, to, it's just very cumbersome, but, uh, there is, there is another one that I've seen, but I haven't tried the one that gets attached to the head and kind of sits in the front. Oh, I haven't seen that. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I've, I've seen that, but at least just a, like prototypes, but not, uh, I don't think that's have they have actual uh, manufactured it. But uh, for now, most most patients, just a conventional face mask. Grumman's, I think, has pads on, the, on, on here. Correct. Which is uh, not a good idea because your, your whole mid face comes forward with the face mask. So if you have a padding on the zyga on on here on this bone, zygomatic bone, then uh, you re restricting. Uh, it's like trying to pull yourself out of, you know, uh, out of uh, water by pulling yourself by the hair. It's right, just, right. It's so, canceling itself out. Basically. Right, it's canceling itself out exactly. Wow, that's incredibly uh, ignorant of the manufacturer of that appliance. Then, look, sometimes it maybe work for some younger kids, but uh, uh, you know, they someone. Try to think of something to rest it here, maybe not so Other much on the, the chin. chin, so that in some patients that could be an alternative, maybe not the best one. Right, or in all fairness to them, maybe they just didn't realize that pulling on the maxilla could yeah. have the effect of pulling on the entire face. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of a new idea. Yeah, and all, every time we see, you know, protraction cases and uh, superimposed protraction cases, the whole mid face comes forward. That's why patients who get MSC with face mask, you know, develop better cheekbones. Right. Right. So you you admit that MSE can and, and often does have an effect on the cheekbones. A oh, positive effect. Well, always, always. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, how do you manage um, when the patient is wearing the face mask that pushes on the lower jaw like that? What do you tell the patient if there's pain? Stop. Do you tell them to consciously like engage and push back against it or no, no, you just. Plug just, and just, chug? just plug and chug. Exactly. Mm. And if they do have pain or discomfort, then we look for alternatives. Right. Hopefully they have like have the TMJ issues. Right, right. And what's the ideal angle to pull on a face mask? Let's say the maxilla is parallel to the earth, which it n never really is. I mm -hmm. feel like in most patients it's downswung. True. What, how do you like to pull? Do you like to pull flat parallel to the earth? Do you no, like to I pull it? Slightly down. S excuse me? S slightly down. Slightly down angle. Slightly down? Yeah. Why is that? Well, I have to realize that uh, in uh, if you're dealing with a class three cases, especially uh, if they have uh, upper jaw that's deficient and they're kind of a lower jaw is like a swing, right? So it auto rotates forward and that's where your class three comes from. So you want to pull the upper jaw down and forward. So this way, like in that, that's how natural growth would, 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 would happen. So it pushes the, the bottom jaw kind of down and back a little bit. And that's part of your underbite correction in non-surgical cases. Oh, wow. So part of correcting the underbite is actually, to some degree, moving the lower jaw back a hair. Correct. Okay. More, more down than back. But by, by virtue of it moving down, it's, you know, if, if, you, if you plot horizontal points, you know, it, it kind of goes like this. So it, it has a, a back motion, even though you're not really retracting the lower jaw. Right. Wow. Gosh, uh, any kid who wants MSE, MSE and face mask, you know they want to pull straight up to 12 o'clock, doctor. You're shattering a lot of dreams right now. Well, if, you, if you're going to pull <laughs> pull up, then you're going to, A, you're going to work a, a lot more against a lot of other, you know, uh, there's a lot of resistance up. <laughs> and then that's one. And second of all, most class three patients, with the very few exceptions, are uh, deficient and vertical. So why would you want to make it more deficient if you want to pull up? Right. Yeah, they are deficient in the vertical, aren't they? It seems so, almost like yeah. it's like a shortness of this whole yeah, space. Yeah, that is correct. So you don't want to make it even shorter. Right. For the non-class three patients who are just universally small everywhere, but in a class one, would you say it's reasonable for them to sort of pull straight? Uh, straight or slightly down still. Interesting. Because if you pull too far up, you're just not going to get any results. Right, exactly. You're trying to compress bone into bone basically at that that, point. that is correct interesting interesting